Uh, first off, want to want to thank the uh, the crowd. I thought for a night game, um, I guess the attendance was 95,000, and uh, and you heard them. It, it was fun. Uh, you could tell they were having fun out there. They were loud, and, uh, and it was great to round to a, just about a full stadium. So I uh, really appreciate everyone's support there. Uh, overall in the game, I thought uh, we did some good things. I thought that um, there's still some things to build on, of course, um, but you can certainly see there's a lot of guys out there that you know desperately need these snaps and this experience uh, to keep building. And that's the idea is that if we keep building, uh, then we'll have a chance to get to where we want to be by the end of the season. We'll open up with questions. Uh, far left, Bill Landis, The Athletic. Ryan, uh, what transpired there with Kayvon Pope in the second quarter that it looked like you totally leave the sideline after all that? Yeah, so, um, you know, someone just kind of told me, uh, I guess there was some with a tweet or something. I'm going to kind of get the details of everything that happened before I say anything there. You got a player transfer midweek from that group, and then obviously this happened today. Uh, you're already laying on guys there, but I don't know. I don't, I don't, what's going on in that room right now? Are you okay with how that's all kind of come along? Well, in, in today's day and age, you know, guys can, um, you know, leave uh, you know, with four games because they, you know, uh, can redshirt. And then, um, you know, if they want to go in, enter the portal, that's that's their prerogative. And, you know, I have a hard time with that because I think, you know, when you make a commitment to a team at the beginning of the year, um, you make a commitment to Ohio State and to the Buckeyes, that that's, that's what you do. Um, one of the hard things is that, you know, you have to play certain guys and, you know, you have to make some decisions on, who, you know, who's playing in those games. And, you know, you just, you know, you, you really count on the guys to still be great teammates if, if they're not getting on the field. Over here to the right, Austin Ward, Letterman Row. And I, I know that you'll say that you need to see the film before you comment, but sure. what your first first glance at these quarterbacks and what you thought leaving the field and if that changes anything for you next week if CJ's healthy. Um, I, like you said, I'll, I'll watch the film uh, and see. Uh, you know, you, you see certain things out there. Um, I thought there were some, some things that were okay. I thought there were some things that we need to certainly clean up. Um, I thought uh, I got to find out where, where their eyes were at times. Um, you know, with Kyle, um, you know, does a really good job preparing, um, you know, excellent job. He puts a lot of work into this thing. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's the first time he's ever played in, in a college football game. He's a true freshman. Um, so I think the game was moving pretty fast for him early on. Um, but but he was even he was working at hyperspeed, I think. And uh, one of the things we talk about with young quarterbacks is finding the speed of the game. And um, I, I think there were times where he did. Um, and then I thought, you know, Jack came in and kind of gave, um, you know, had some poise in there. And he made some nice throws as well. I thought, um, you know, he did some positive things. So, again, we'll kind of look at it. Um, you know, probably not going to make any hard decisions here, but it's just, it's, it's part of the puzzle for sure. Uh, front row left, Pat Murphy, 24-7 Sports. Ryan, on the quarterback topic, when we talked to you on Tuesday, you said you weren't going to put a guy in arbitrarily. We took Thursday, you, you announced that CJ probably won't play. Was there any trepidation about playing these guys, having them play well, and then causing any sort of quarterback competition that maybe you didn't want to have midseason? Well, I, I, from the beginning, I've said that we're going to need all three. And, you know, what does that mean? Um, you know, if we have, you know, one guy that we feel like, or two guys that we feel like, or three guys that we feel like can play and, and we can, you know, win a championship with, and then we're, we're in pretty good shape. You know, I think we're still working towards that. And that's um, this was an opportunity to get those guys some reps, get them in the game, get a real evaluation, which is really going to help them because, you know, in practice you see certain things a certain way, but then when it's coming live and you get hit, you know, it hurts. And um, so I think this is a huge learning experience. I, in the long run, this is, this is great to have these guys get these reps. Um, and so I was excited about that part for them. Front row middle, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Hackman goes down and scores early, takes a 7 8 lead. And then it seemed like as you started to get like real penetration, especially from the middle of that defensive line, the game changed. You, we've been asking you a lot of questions about the pass rush. Just what did you see from that part of the defense and how did it change things? In your I, I, thought, I thought our confidence could, you know, just built up over, over the series. And you know, part of um, you know, some of these guys who, who haven't, don't have a lot of experience in the game is you know get you know finding again it's kind of like the same thing we talked about with the quarterback is kind of find the rhythm the rhythm of the game and um, I, I do feel a little bit like in that first series on, on both sides we were kind of feeling our way around uh, and, and then all of a sudden we kick started it and kind of got rolling and, and, and played with confidence for the rest of the game so um, so I think that's part of it you know it's just you know feeling feeling confident about what you're doing and then building off of it 
And the more times that um, some of these younger players start making plays, then I think you know you look to the guy next to you, and, you, and that builds confidence because you know he can do it. And this is new for our guys. You know, some of these guys just don't have a ton of um, you know banked reps, and now they're building them. And, and you can see like Ronnie Hickman's a great example of that. You know, he's played a few games now. He makes that interception, and um, you know, he's starting to you know build a little bit of reputation for for being a guy who's playing really good football right now. Um, you know, many many people didn't really know who Ronnie was at about four weeks ago. You know, and now he's really doing it. Cody Simon's starting to show up, and um, you know, so again, I think it, there was some there was some strides in the right direction. And I thought we were aggressive overall, which was good. I thought we tackled. Back row left, Clay Hall, WSYX. Did you say anything to Kyle after that first uh, possession? It wasn't, our, it wasn't an artistic success, but I mean, he threw, you know, you saw it, through behind, through over, through. Um, did you settle him down right there? Uh, yeah, I tried to. Yeah, just take a, take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath and, uh, and, and kind of find the speed of the game, you know, and just trust your eyes, trust your reads. You've done a lot of preparation to get here. And, and and then, and then I thought he settled down a little bit. Breathing pretty good. Breathing. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Pretty good, yeah. Uh, front row middle, Bill uh, Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Do you have a sense of whether uh, CJ will be able to play next week? Um, and did you get what you wanted to out of this game? Well, I think we got the experience, and that was good. You know, but for both these guys, got some reps. Um, I also think that uh, you know, when it comes to CJ, we'll kind of see that tomorrow. You know, we'll practice tomorrow and see how he's doing. Um, Seems like uh, you know today he you know, he's feeling stronger, feeling better. So you know that you know we made that decision last Sunday, and now we said we're going to sit down um, you know tomorrow and, and kind of figure out what the, what the the plan for the week is, and you know hope we can get him going going this week. Far and getting what you wanted out of this game. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean again, it's it's body reps. Do I think everything went perfectly? No, absolutely not. But but uh, but the fact that they both played in games and. Or in the game and, and got you know some series under their belt, I think was good. Uh, back left, Doug Maurice, Cleveland.com. Ryan, obviously the, the K-Bot situation was pretty unusual to see something like that happen during a game. You have another veteran earlier in the year who didn't play early. You were talking about maybe you just need to see more in practice. Is, is there anything happening that it, is any of this any indication of anything happening within the team, that especially to have an incident like this with K-Bot? That publicly tonight. No, no. I, it's it's what it really is. Is just I think you know a lot of guys they want to play and you know you can't play everybody, and, and then there you know frustration kicks in and um, so again I, I don't really want to comment too much on that you know particular situation, but I certainly think it's very isolated. Uh, front row right, Tim May, Letterman Row. Yeah, you talked about this a little bit earlier, uh, Ryan. But when you leave here tonight, you feel a confidence that you've got a quarterback or two. If something does happen to CJs, we've talked about that many times. You feel much better about that situation than you did three hours ago from the standpoint of a, a guy who went in and has now played at least played a game. I, I think now you know what you have at least. No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even say you know what you have, but at least you have an idea of what you have when you get into the game because you, you don't know until you actually play. And now we have some things that we can build on and try to grow from for sure. And was there a guy on defense? You know, you brought up Ruddy. Was there another guy, a couple of guys that just jumped out at you tonight from an effort standpoint when you looked out there? Um, just trying to think of some of the guys. Uh, I, I thought Cody played hard. I thought, um, you know, again, I saw Tyleek in the backfield a bunch. Um, you know, it was good to see Mike Hall. Mike Hall somebody who hadn't really uh, done a whole uh, or had a whole bunch of snaps, but he was kind of back there. You know, and he had a couple penalties, but I know he played hard. Um, Looked like Lathan was playing hard. You know, again, you have to kind of watch the film because you just see bits and pieces. But um, overall, I thought you know we, we kind of brought it pretty pretty good there at a couple points. At far left, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Ryan, obviously that first drive didn't go pretty well for Kyle, and you guys were kind of pushing down the field a couple times. Did you guys adjust maybe the game plan at all in that second drive? It seemed like it was a lot more you know, short stuff, jet sweep, just stuff to get into the wide receiver's hands, and maybe get him a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I mean trying to get him into a rhythm of the game, you know. Um, the first one was a sprint out, which we thought would be, you know, a way to do that. And then, um, and then the bubble screen went behind. And then, but you know, we, we, we kind of wanted that that's with the quarterback. It's that's kind of a way to find find the rhythm of the game. But um, but yeah, that was the idea. And that new for a quarterback, just regardless of what type of throw it is, the fact that he just completed a pass and now he feels like he's in there. I think that's a big, you know. I, I remember kind of going through it when I was a quarterback. You know, you you overthink things, 
and you know you can really you, you know uh, and you know all three of these quarterbacks they do a lot of thinking you know they're they're very smart and uh, you can overthink it you know and then and then once you kind of it's like the jitters of uh, any any type of situation once you get in the moment you forget about all those things and um, and that's kind of what we, you know you hope to do with a couple completions is kind of flush out all those jitters and now you can just go go back to your training and your instincts and final questions will be second row uh, middle Lori Schmidt Columbus Dispatch coach I know you have to review the incident and everything but there's a report out about it can you tell us what coach's status is with the team right now Oh, no, again, I'm not going to comment on anything until I get off. His status with the team, he's still a member of the Ohio State Buckeyes right now or no? Yeah, I mean, I just got off the field, so I'm going to have to figure out exactly where that all stands right now. Yeah. Coach, thank you very much.